When it comes to ultralights and bedded quilts, there are only a few high quality options, and the options are expensive. On top of this, even the densest materials used can result in colder sleep. With a little elbow grease, you can turn this into this. A product made for you that's warmer and lighter. I had no sewing machine experience prior to making my quilt, so there's hope even for you as a complete beginner. Let's jump in and have some fun. Today, we'll quickly cover why one would go with a sleeping quilt versus a traditional sleeping bag, and then move through a step-by-step -step guide to making your own ultralight synthetic sleeping quilt. First, some history. While no technical standard exists, light and ultralight backpacking are commonly defined as carrying a total base pack weight less than 15 or 10 pounds respectively. This ultralight backpacking minimal approach has far-reaching consequences. Less weight means less stress on the body, fewer injuries, faster hiking, which can lead to more mileage per day, shorter through hikes, which lead to more money left in your pocket to support important causes after your through hike. The debate has mostly been settled within the ultralight hiking community. Sleeping quilts have emerged victorious over bags. The science is simple. When you lay a top down or synthetic insulation, you compress it. This compression almost eliminates all of the insulative properties, adding no additional warmth, but some additional weight. Ultimately, thermal insulation from the ground comes from your sleeping pad. For those looking to reduce weight or to sleep warmer at an equivalent weight, a sleeping quilt is the way to go. So now that we've decided a sleeping quilt, you have a decision to make, synthetic or down. There are pros and cons, which I won't go into detail on this video, but we'll say that sewing a synthetic quilt is easier, especially for beginners. At a high level, there are three stages to getting to a finished product. The first, design and ordering. The second, preparation. The third, sewing. Let's talk about design and ordering supplies. I based my design off of the two leading synthetic quilts on the market, the Enlightened Equipment Enigma and the MLD Spirit 28. I use their spec sheets as an important starting point. From Enlightened Equipment, I referenced their size chart and took my measurements to determine which dimensions would work for me. From MLD, I knew I wanted more warmth. I saw four ounce per yard apex insulation was used. I could go higher. I also saw they'd use a heavier but equal denier, internal and external nylon, so I prepared to find lighter materials with the same denier. With that sorted, I sketched out my design and created an order list. Ordering supplies for your custom gear online is simple. Ripstop by the Roll was my one-stop shop. It was easy to navigate and had a lot of helpful detailed descriptions, specs, and reviews for each product. I've included my order list in the description below. The total cost was under $100 and it arrived in under a week. So let's get to preparing. If you're a complete beginner, I'd recommend practicing on some fabrics like muslin to get the hang of things. Whether you take an in-person class, use YouTube, or both, sewing can be an invaluable and rewarding life skill. Don't be discouraged. I went from never touching a sewing machine to a finished quilt in a couple days. So the first thing I did was lay out all of the sleeping quilt layers insulation, then the two layers of nylon to fed a mat facing each other. The shiny side is calendared, a process of melting the material which provides downproofing, a tighter heat barrier, and additional water resistance. If I were to do this again, I'd place my lightest color layer on top. This makes it much easier to sew zippers, buckles, and drawstring channels. With everything squared, pin the outer edges of the sleeping quilt. Try your best to smooth the material with each pin, it doesn't have to be perfect now, as you'll have a few opportunities to make adjustments. Take your design measurements to the quilt. Having a long straight edge and tailor tape can help you measure things out. I use tailor's chalk to make my marks. I'd recommend making marks that the seam can consistently follow. You wanna be able to see these clearly. Ensure you leave at least half an inch for seam allowance. This means make sure to have about half an inch of excess material outside of the line that you've drawn. Now is a good time to lay inside of the dimensions you've drawn to ensure you're loosely comfortable with the fit. Okay, our next step is to repin the quilt, pin by pin, along the line you've drawn. You can now loosely cut around the exterior of your marking, remembering to leave at least half an inch of space around the outer edge for your seam allowance. You can trim this down later. Okay, so on to the drawstring channels. 
I used a heavier 15D taffeta for both the head and foot drawstring channel. You can measure it out to be the length of the top and bottom of your quilt based on the lines drawn. I cut pieces that were two inches from the top and bottom respectively, so when folded, they'd be one inch. You can press the edges by hand, or you can use an iron on its lowest setting for synthetic materials. I first hand pinched and then finished with an iron. I folded the edges as well to provide a little more structural integrity. We also want to assemble our buckles. I cut six pieces of mill spec to three inches each or one and a half inches when folded. So now you have your general shape and components. You're ready to pin in your zippers, low profile buckles, and drawstring channel. Conceptually, this can be challenging, but everything should face inward. The teeth of the zipper, the buckle heads, and the head of the drawstring channel. We have a zipper that will run 24 inches from the foot of the quilt up. Then we have three low profile buckles on each side. These should face upward. The side of the male and female component in each pair shouldn't matter, though I'd encourage consistency. All of one side could be female, all the other could be male as an example. I'd recommend spacing the buckles evenly with one buckle at the top of the quilt and one directly above the zipper. The remaining buckle between those two. If you want an easy time sewing, I recommend inserting the pin into where you would like the seam to go, and then using that hole once you pull it out as a marker. For the zipper, that's about halfway across the connective plastic material. Also, as you add in your components, this is your opportunity to smooth the quilt top nylon out if you weren't happy with your original pin. All right, so at this point, you have everything pinned. One quick check to make, inspect, all of the pins and ensure that you have adequate inclusion of all three layers with seam allowance or four layers if you're reviewing the zipper, buckle, or drawstring channel areas. Address any issues before proceeding. Now you're ready to sew. Some notes. By now, you realize that this fabric can be tough to work with. Thin nylon, fluffy insulation, and the size of the quilt could give veterans a run for their money. Here are some tips. You can safely fold the quilt down to make it much more maneuverable. Be mindful of your needles. When feeding the fabric through the machine with the right pacing, you can ensure you're using your fingers to continuously lay the fabric flat. If the fabric starts to bunch up with your foot completely off the pedal, manually place the needle down into the fabric, lift the foot of the sewing machine and smooth things out. Replace the foot of the sewing machine and start again once ready. In terms of settings, I started with a strong triple stitch but ran into issues at the buckles. A single stitch will work just fine, or you could alternate between triple and single when meeting a buckle. My tension on the Singer machine I used was set to three. The needle position was in the middle, width was two, and my length was three. You should strongly consider using a zipper foot with the zipper foot on the left if you are facing it. The zipper foot will allow you to, you guessed it, get your zipper sewn. All right, so let's sew. You want to do a nice back stitch to ensure your seams don't come undone. I also agreed on the hole I'd leave open so I could flip the quilt inside out. I placed mine near the head of the quilt on the right side when looking from the head of the quilt down to the foot of the quilt while sewing and left about 16 inches. You could leave more to make turning the quilt inside out easier. Once you've sewn around all the edges and back stitched the other side of the opening of your hole, you can reinspect all seams to ensure all layers have been included. I had issues with my quilt originally, one small hole and a piece of the drawstring channel left flailing. I used a seam ripper delicately on the seam and restitched it. Now one of the most exciting parts, turning the quilt right side out to ensure everything is proper. My favorite technique for turning the quilt right side out or inside out is to reach into the corners and gently pull the corners through the opening, starting with the corners closest to my hole. Once turned inside out, do a thorough inspection and note any problem areas. All looks good. If you had extra fabric on the interior or areas to address, turn the quilt inside out again and go ahead and trim those. With all excess trimmed, let's finalize the quilt. I wanted to color match the exterior and interior fabric of my quilt, so I re-threaded my machine with black and pink thread. If you thought we were done pinning, not quite yet. The pinning to close the opening is challenging. 
It's okay not to pin it to the insulation, but I'd focus on getting a close pin with the layer of taffeta folded inward. The smoother the stitching of the quilt before this part, the easier it'll be to go through it. You might need to ask somebody to help hold the fabric tight so that you can properly pin. As a beginner, I was not brave enough to use a serger on this material. All right, our final step. Let's do a quick backstitch and then sew the hole shut. End with a backstitch and voila. Bask in the glory of your new quilt. I also went ahead and weighed mine. Relative to the competitors, it came in a tad bit lighter. I was very pleased with the result. So, you just became someone capable of making your own sleeping quilt. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. I would wish I had something like this before I did mine. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comment section below. As always, while you're out there, enjoy. Good vibes, Crush Miles.